You're listening to Convenience Matters, brought to you by Nax. Whether it's for food, fuel, drinks, or snacks, about half of the U.S. population shops at a convenience store every day. We'll talk about what we see at stores and what the future may hold for our industry. The new normal, quarantine, phases, socially distant, PPE, open, closed, and my personal favorite, pivot. These are all phrases that have made their way into our everyday vocabulary. And while convenience stores have remained open during the pandemic, communicating that and what's inside is imperative to customers so they know what they can buy and how to behave once they're in the store. Today, we're going to talk about communications and most importantly, visual and digital communications. Welcome to Convenience Matters. I'm Carolyn Schneer with Nax. And I'm Donovan Woods with the Fuels Institute. And today we're joined by Rick Sales, president of Abierto Networks. Now, Rick, welcome to the show. Good morning, welcome. Thank you. Thank you for being here. And Rick, we've worked with you for many years at the NAC show, but just to get our audience introduced to exactly what your organization does, let's start with where we usually see your organization. What could you explain to our audience as it comes to four court communications? What is that and why is it important? Well, you know, four core communications is something that we've had for a very long time. Um, and most of them tend to be static, uh, printed communications that retailers are using. Um, and, you know, I feel personally that's been an area where digital communications have underperformed as compared to what happens inside of the store or in the back room when we communicate with employees. So we've been focused on the four court for quite a bit. Uh, talking with retailers about what needs to happen there. And then the pandemic hit um, and became evident that lots of things need to happen there as things were changing and messaging to people who were in the forecourt and not coming into the store was going to become critical for future success. So so the forecourt is a great area of challenge because of the fact that it's outside, but it's also an area of opportunity because of what you can do with the consumers that are there at the point of purchase. Well, and Rick, like I said in the beginning, I think, you know, it's so different these days, you know, you and and before this too, you don't know what's happening in the store. And like, even now you don't know, is it like it's open? Is it closed? Like, what do I, do I wear my mask? Do I have to wear a mask? Do I have to, you know, stand in line outside and wait for everyone? Anyway, there's a lot of things to communicate. And then even besides that, there's you know, what's on sale? What's your deals for today? Hey, I'm hungry. What do I want to eat? You know, like what, what am I starving for? Or like, even, you know, I'm just filling up my tank and it catches your eye that there's something cool happening in the store. So, um, with all that, you're talking about, um, how it's important to communicate externally. And, um, I guess what, with this whole new normal, what are some of the things that have changed that retailers um, and customers might be looking more towards to help get that message out? Well, you know, I think you are totally right. Uh, and there's a duality to what's happening today in this quote unquote new normal. And the first part of the duality is you and me as consumers, we really don't know what's right. Uh, and despite lots of communication online and on your mobile device, um, there is that element of, okay, this is what this brand is doing, but is this truly available for me at my local store or where I'm at today? So we always have that question. I went out to get some creamer the other day, was shocked that where I went was not open at 7 a.m. And I had no way of finding that out until I got there. So you have that piece, but then you have an even more interesting piece. Uh, earlier this week, our client Sheets had their IT vendor days where we had a virtual meeting. It was very interesting. Not, not Usually we go to Claysburg for this, but it was done uh, virtually. And they talked about the number of things that they had introduced in the last five months to enhance the consumer experience. You talk about scan and go. You talk about enhances to mobile ordering. You talk about curbside delivery. You talk about integration to DoorDash. Um, you talk about extensive cleaning. What's available for crew serve versus self serve? I mean, the list is impressive. And how do you communicate this to the consumer? And particularly a consumer that is on your site that is not planning on coming in. So clearly, the other methods by which you communicate to this person have failed and you have them on site and you need to talk to them about 
the many things that you have invested millions of dollars to enhance the experience. That's why I think that messaging is so critical because people are going to continue to change procedures, systems, and offerings for the foreseeable future, and consumers are going to have a tough time keeping up. Absolutely. And I think about, Rick, um, just in any relationship, whether it's coworker, um, sibling, your, your spouse, whatever it may be, roommate, communication is always one of the things where people have an issue. Someone thought they knew, the other person didn't know. So for a consumer to retail a relationship where I'm not talking to you every day, I don't have to see you every day, messages can get lost. So I'm assuming what you're trying to say is as much as retailers think they're talking to and communicating whatever's happening inside the store, do it more. You can't communicate enough. Is that accurate? It's very accurate. And in fact, this is one of the underlying rules of communication that apply to what you're doing in the store, on the forecourt, in the back room. And we really saw it play out in some of our employee communications. You think about this environment, communicating with the employee is just as critical as communicating with the consumer. And some of the messaging that we had from them after we communicated with them on important uh, um company directions is that they were grateful that they did not have to interpret the directive for a consumer. They could just simply support it because the messaging on site was providing a clear message. So whether you're talking to the employee or you're talking to the consumer, a clear, unified, simple message that is relevant um, is very important. In fact, I would say that there's four elements to the four core that really matter. The message has to be hyper local. You know, it'd be nice that I'd known that that convenience store opened at 7.30 instead of 7. It has to be timely. It's got to matter to me now. It's got to be relevant to me as a consumer and ultimately it has to be engaging. And I would say that today's generation of four car communications fails on all fronts. It's not hyper local, is generally not timely, is usually not relevant, and is most of the time not engaging at all. Well, and I mean, nowadays, well, even just, I mean, it's, it's sometimes even just as simple as a paper thing slapped up on the, uh, the window, which is not pretty. It's not, um, it's functional, but that's about it. And like now, especially where I am, I'm seeing health department logos, like emblazoned everywhere. You must wear this. You must wear this. Here's a regulation. You have to wear a mask. You stay six feet, you know, and that's fine because it's possibly a local regulation, but there's probably a much more attractive way to do this. And, um, but sometimes it can get costly, but there are cost effective ways that things can be done well and nice and smoothly and simple. And like you said, hyper local and timely. Um, yeah. Do you have some suggestions for retailers and those listening? Yeah, I think that, you know, this issue of cost is an important issue. Um, and, and there's a number of dimensions to it. But I want to start with a marketing dimension to it and talk about uh, our client, Travel Centers of America, who is working with us in testing our new open LED uh, product uh, that we're going to talk about it a little later today in this in this uh, podcast. Um, and, you know, they shared with me a real issue. And it's a truck stop and the truckers, you know, the distance between the building and where the trucks are is meaningful. And there are regulations for mask wearing and other th- procedures and people need to follow. And they were having a very interesting experience. And I've heard this with other retailers that the consumer gets to the door and sees the eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper that says you must wear a mask. And now the consumer's upset because they walked from their car or their truck and they did not bring their mask. And they have to walk back to get their mask or they'll walk in upset to complain. So you already started by destroying the consumer experience in the way that you communicated your mass message. And then you have the flip side of that. And I've heard retailers tell me this as well. Person comes in, they're not wearing a mask, and other consumers in the store are upset that the store is not enforcing its policy or not messaging correctly. So in both of these cases, the cost of not messaging correctly is hard to measure. 
Okay, but it's meaningful. And you look at the investment that you might make in technology as compared to taking a reactive approach of printing a piece of paper that you can only read till you, when you get to the door, uh, and then you have to decide what it's telling you. You know, th- that investment really pays back in enhancing that consumer's experience so that person revisits you. I mean, the world did not come to an end. We have new rules and things have changed, but I'm pretty certain convenience stores were going to survive into the future. We are essential. We're part of the infrastructure and people will come back and we want them to come back. And part of getting them to come back is this whole concept of engaging with the brand so they will revisit. That they will believe that the brand is taking care of me that they're taking steps to make this place clean, that they're worthy of me coming back here. And someday they will bring some of the goods that I was buying from them, but today they have some things that may be new uh, or new ways of interacting with them. That whole brand management is the secret sauce that makes everything worth everything work and and it's priceless. So when you look at that and you value that, I come back to those four elements. Can you communicate these important messages in a hyper-local way? So people say, hey, this, this is relevant to me right now. Is it timely? Does it matter now? Is it personal to what I want to do? And did you do it in a way that engaged me and gave me a positive experience? Um, there, that, that investment in technology, that investment in content, uh, is really what drives your future revenue. Um, and if you use um, reactive messaging, you really leave it for that consumer and other brands to uh, tell the story and to uh, embrace what's going to happen in the future. Uh, today, one of the things that's changing um, that perhaps people don't think about is that as consumers, we're making choices on who we do business with. We're watching how people are behaving, how they're taking care of their employees, you know, all the different things that they're doing. Um, and, and I think the convenience store industry has done a wonderful job of going out there and redefining who we are, you know, creating respect for our people uh, that work in the stores and, and helping the consumer view us as really integral to their life. So they have a, we have a great opportunity to communicate with them who we are, what we do, and why we're important to them. So when you look at the cost of the investment, the whole marketing side, I personally think there's gold in them hills. Um, but if you look at the construction side of this, what we're doing is also really meaningful. We have created a big, bold, and beautiful outward-facing display that does not require an outside installation. And, you know, I'm sure, Donovan, you know, you know, breaking concrete and running technology on the forecourt is easier said than done. Correct. And it's worth money. So, so the first thing that this thing does from a cost standpoint is it changes the equation, and it gives you an indoor installation for a – outdoor facing messaging platform. Um, and, and if you did that externally, you're probably talking about two X or three X in total cost when everything is said and done. Um, and then you compare that to other ways that you can invest in cost. There are other internal displays that you can purchase that you could use to face outside. They cost money, they cost a little more money, uh, but they don't have an external installation. And what they don't do is they're not attractive. They're not pleasing. So you got to take into account how we look at convenience stores. And today, convenience stores need to look clean. We're not looking for clutter. Employees need to have clean lines of sight to the forecourt to make sure it's safe. Consumers want to see their car and their kids in the car and, and make sure that it's safe outside. So we've been on this trend to you know, have clean windows and a clean store and lower shelves so people can see around. And we're not going to go backwards and put big black boxes on our windows. Uh, let me let me ask you a little bit about that, because we don't have a ton of time. And I want to make sure we get back to something you mentioned in terms of the open LED um, yes. marketing. But two things. Max has a stat that shows that the average person um, is at the pump each year, approximately three hours. 
So we are we have our customers in front of us for a total of three hours the whole year or three to five minutes um, at the gas pump. So you have this opportunity to market to them. I'm wondering what is it that you're talking about and what can they do with this time they have? Well, so believe it or not, three to five minutes and three hours is a huge amount of time. Um, And I think part of looking at that time differently is looking at how you message in convenience stores. Um, There is a practice on how you build messaging. Um, We're not doing TV. The consumer is not going to engage with you at the TV level. You think about when you sit down and watch TV, you're absorbed in what you're doing. You're not going to get that. You're not going to get the interactive engagement that you get on a mobile device. So you're going to be able to create awareness and within 10 seconds deliver a call to action or deliver a message that creates brand awareness and brand brand recognition or some kind of strong feeling towards the brand and what you're doing. It only takes seven to 10 seconds to send that message and have the consumer internalize it and decide whether it's important to them or not. So in a period of three to five minutes, there's quite a bit of messaging that you can communicate with that consumer. Uh, The other thing that happens here that I think is very interesting is that that time can be day parted. So what you might communicate in the morning is different than what you might communicate in other parts of the day or throughout the week. So is as much the time as the relevance of the message. So 10 seconds in the morning with a breakfast sandwich can create 5 to 15% lift in sales of that product. Guaranteed just by simple awareness and the value of the promotion. Uh, and that's really meaningful traffic. And it doesn't take a 30 second spot to convey that to someone. Um, similarly with messages about uh, how to do business with a retailer, um, you know, they're simple to understand messages, whether you're telling them wear a mask or you're telling them to use the app uh, or the phone to scan graphics, animation, Clear messaging and understanding the consumer's attention span is important to deliver. So in a three in a three hour a year uh, content basket delivered in two to three minute increments during the visit, a, con- a retailer can convey promotions throughout the day, availability throughout the month, as well as current. Uh, procedures and and loyalty programs and other ways of enhancing your experience when you interact with that retailer most effectively. It's really a ton of time to use on this type of messaging. So Rick, the way I'm kind of hearing if I'm following, right, it's basically um, storytelling. So uh, somebody drives up, they have to the store, they need something, they need gas. Let's say they come for that reason, which most people do. Um, they drive up, and now they're they're filling up their car and they're staring at the store. They're staring at the uh, the pump or somewhere around it. And and you're 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 walking them through a story essentially. If I'm if if I'm following, where you know you're using the same imagery. And um, now I'm going to get metaphorical. You've got a canvas and you're looking at the canvas and you're painting the picture and you're bringing them anyway. Um, wow. But you're bringing them inside. <laughs> yeah. So you're going inside, but it's the same messaging. It's the same stories. The same font even like it's just it brings that brand all the way in um and whether you're telling the story about um you know what's happening inside but or you know here's your you're hungry it's morning you're in your routine um you can i think a, a customer should would be following this whole story as they go in the store now it matches the in-store signage so whatever they're seeing on the outside of the store the windows to what they're seeing inside of the store on maybe the digital signs if you have them or even just the the printed signs um and and then does that even convey onto the app if there's an app for this for that particular brand? Like is that am I basically am I am I getting too metaphorical? Well maybe. I think that <laughs> if you look at if you look at the consumer and you look at us as as humans, right? So there's some things that we know. And one of the things that we really know is that humans react to motion. Um, so one of the things that open led does is it brings all of our technology from our open platform, digital content management system that delivers content in an engaging way inside of the store in the back room. We brought that to the window. So we're bringing that window to life and we're bringing that window to life with animation. 
right? So we're bringing it in a way that you can't ignore it, okay? We're packaging the messages in ways in, in the amount of time that you can absorb, but we're presenting the message in a way that you cannot ignore. So we are preserving the brand and the font and the colors and all the things that make you connect with Sheets or Wawa or Cumberland Farms, whoever your favorite brand is. But in the way that we're presenting the message, we're thinking about you as a consumer of information and using animation, using proper wording, uh, using proper size so you can read it and you can absorb the message quickly because you're right. We're telling a story. We're telling a story about what's happening here today that it matters to you. And we're cutting through all the noise because you think about it, you're sitting there and you're pumping fuel and you're in a very noisy environment. You may have kids in the car that are doing things. You may be on the phone looking for something while the tank is filling up. Um, you, you may be texting with someone. There, you know, when you're filling up, you everybody has a busy lifestyle. And here is this window that you cannot get out of your sight that keeps talking to you. Because it's talking to you and says, hey, I have coffee now. Okay, my roller grill is open. Uh, if you downloaded the app, you can order from where you are and we'll bring it out to your car. Whatever message you need to get to that person today, you're trying to create a conversion. That is no different than the conversions that we try to create online. You're presenting a message and trying that person to react and then presenting another message. And the collective of those messages provide a story and a brand image and perception that when you leave that site, you should feel good, the fact that you were there, whether you walked into the store or not, because there's two objectives at the end of the day, get you to react to a call to action and buy something now, or to enhance your shopping experience so you come back. And those are the two things that you accomplish with a consumer that's on the forecourt who did not plan to go into the store. So using animation, using full video, using a big, bold, impactful canvas, delivering very tight, actionable messaging that the consumer can absorb in their very noisy environment, allows you to cut through all of that and get that consumer to say, yeah, I could use a cup of coffee now. I could use a cup of coffee now. You just suggest, I'm very suggestible. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Or maybe I'm just hungry. Um, but the, I, I, I like how you, you, you broke that down. And I mean, that, that could obviously be done digitally. That could be done simple, you know, cover uh, paper, you know, signage. But as you mentioned, you don't want to clutter up the windows because that is a safety issue. And it, 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 um, the clean lines that you talked about and digitally, and it just, it makes it feel safer, makes it feel clean inside. Um, now I have the privilege of knowing you for many years through our next tech, one of our old next events stays and everything else. Um, so I've followed you on LinkedIn for years and I know what you're talking about, but is there a way you can visually describe to our listeners what this um, canvas you're talking about the I think it's open LED um, what that is what what ex in, in, in few and, and elaborate words as possible great <laughs> and thank you because you know we're very excited about this It's very cool product so like I said it's a big bold canvas that you have on your building and it's displaying amazing content and how do we do that Okay, so a couple years ago, LG approached us. We are a big partner with LG. Uh, they they are the leader in in digital technology, uh, and they approached me and they had created a product which was an LED film, and they wanted our opinion. They had built this product for architectural purposes, uh, but wanted to know if there was an application in retail. So they brought me this product that is a flexible film about an eighth of an inch thick that adheres to the inside of glass and it's got leds laminated inside so this is extremely low profile you can't even tell that's there it looks like tinting on the glass but it's got one directional leds inside of the film pointing at the forecourt so not only is it really low profile it's a film it sticks to glass it is transparent from the inside out. It's 73% transparent, which is one of the things that really excited me because I knew that this design directive was going to impact the use of monitors and other large bulky devices in the store. So a piece of film that you can adhere to the inside of glass and you can drive 
with essence, you know, a media player like device and have a cloud platform like, like ours schedule this window um, it really is it's a very cool concept and when people come and look at it and they say where's the display and, and you say the window is the display um, it really hits home that it's really the latest in digital technology so it's really amazing to look at in that it looks like a piece of vinyl it's a clear piece of vinyl. Um, it has some very low profile connections. Um, we, you know, we wire it and, you know, basically is, the window has a network connection. Uh, and now the window is talking to our cloud host. Um, and now this film can be changed on demand. I mean, real time messaging. Um, uh, which we do as a matter of fact in our platform uh, and deliver time specific or real time messaging to one store or multiple stores. Now you can do this with a window. So it's an installation that blends into the design of the building. It doesn't change your aesthetics. Uh, the product from the inside out, you can see right through it. Uh, we've taken some film and some photography because this is important for, like you said, for safety reasons, all 100% of our customers, their employees need to be able to have unobstructed views of the pump 24 hours a day, daytime and nighttime. So the fact that the LEDs that are inside of the film only point in one direction, allow us to have a full color, amazing display and have a clear film on the inside of the store. So Rick, seeing is believing, as you're telling us right now, where can someone go to find, to see this in action? Cause it's really cool. Like I've seen PowerPoints. I think, um, in fact, you did a visual podcast. I don't know what we call it. I guess it's a podcast, um, about this recently. Where can some people learn some more and see what you're talking about? So if you want to do this virtually, um, I encourage you to visit our, um, our webpage, um, which is open.ab-net.us forward slash open LED. And here you can see some photography uh, and some video and learn more about the product, as well as listen to retailers talk about how uh, changes are affecting their business and how they're communicating these changes. Uh, so there's lots of great information on this page, but visually you can see some amazing photography. Abierto has the only two sites in the world for this product. This is really new and exciting technology. One of them is here in Maine, uh, and the other one is in Ohio. If you're interested in seeing the site firsthand, I'd love to tell you about it and give you the address and be happy to, to invite you to visit the site as well um, because it is a visual product, and we thought about how do we convey that in a podcast and get you to imagine what it would look like? And aside from going to our website and seeing what I think is amazing photography and video or visiting the site, I want you to consider this idea. Yeah, no, I mean, it's, 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 you're like, you're, you're kind of like Bob Ross, you're painting happy little trees with your words. And I, <laughs> it's hard to explain it, but it's so cool to see how to do this. And I think it kind of makes me think of like, okay, the Jetsons isn't exactly the most uh, future looking group anymore, but you know, that, that future thing where things are popping down back to the future, you know, and the, the signs are in the air, but, um, that's the future. I think we're going to see a lot more, you know, things moving and, and, and um, alive of, of uh, marketing versus static signs. And this is um, this is an amazing example for our convenience stores. Now you've been in, like I said, I've known you for years through Nax and uh, you are always forwarding mobile couponing, things that weren't big originally, but have like exploded through the years. So I trust you in talking about this. And I think you're right in communications. Um, we just need to keep sharing with, um, sharing is caring as I tell my kid. Um, but it's, it's sharing and telling folks and customers what's inside, what they need to do, how to behave, how to, how to live. And, and then also just entice them to, to do things. And I think, um, I appreciate all of your messaging and how you broke it down to us early on the, the four ways we need to communicate and reactive versus deliberate. And, um, it's been really awesome talking to you. So Rick, thank you so much. I appreciate you being with us today. Well, thank you for the opportunity to share with you. Um, you know, we love the, te the convenience store industry. Uh, as a tech company, the convenience store industry implements more technology than any other channel 
and is always looking to implement technology to provide better service, to enhance the consumer experience, and provide a competitive advantage uh, to other channels that are looking for these dollars. Uh, so this is a great place to bring new ideas. Uh, and as you know, as a technologist that uh, likes to play in that hairy edge of technology of new things, um, one of the things I love about my clients is that they will come to me with the problem and they say, can this be done? Can we integrate technology to accomplish this? You know, those are exciting conversations and they happen every day in the convenience store industry. That's why we love it. So thank you for giving us the opportunity to share our latest thoughts. We hope that you want to learn more and that you will visit it, visit us virtually. I encourage you to visit me on LinkedIn and on Twitter. Uh, I am Rick Sales in both of them, uh, Rick Sales 85 and Twitter. Uh, so if you want to join the conversation, you want to talk about the challenges that you're facing, uh, that's another great platform to communicate on. Well, thank you so much uh, for your time, for sharing that with us. Um, and I really appreciate hearing from you. And uh, thank you so much for listening to Convenience Matters. Convenience Matters is brought to you by Nax and produced in partnership with Human Factor. For more information, visit convenience.org.